Happy Hanukkah! It's wonderful to be with you on this seventh night of Hanukkah. I'm Laura Mandel, Executive Director of the Jewish Arts Collaborative, and I'm so excited to be here right now with Dr. Ellen Rovner and artist Clint Bukloski talking about the J-Arts Brighter Connected Hanukkah Installation Project. In case you haven't yet had the opportunity to experience Clint's incredible piece that we're here to talk about, it is hanging in the Gallery 456, which is on Broadway in Chelsea. The piece is called Bo, and I have some great news for you that as of today, it will actually be extended through the holiday season. So we have a little longer to get out and see it. So today, we wanted to have an opportunity to understand how this piece, which is one of eight really special pieces in the J Arts Brighter Connected Hanukkah Window Installation Project, came to be in Chelsea. And this story really begins when Ellen, who is a fourth generation Chelsea native, and Clint met to explore the community that at one time was so heavily Jewish that it was actually called Little Jerusalem. And I just have to say that I'm especially proud of this, both because my family has roots in Chelsea and because I have been so taken by Clint's work ever since I first saw it at Hub Week a few years ago. So that we're in for a really special treat. So if you have questions during the conversation, please put them at the Q&A at the bottom of the screen and we'll ask as many of them as time allows. So Ellen and Clint, I know we're all really excited to be bringing um, a little bit of the light of Hanukkah to Chelsea. So let's talk. Um, Ellen, welcome. Tell us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Laura. And thank you very much and Jay Arts and Brighter Connect for sharing Brighter Connected with Chelsea. I think it's great. And also I'd like to thank Mimi Graney at Chelsea City Hall for um, opening up the space at Gallery 456 to this beautiful installation. And of course, to Clint Baklowski, a super talented artist who has brought beauty and light to a city that has endured so much darkness in the past months. So thank you all. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how this project came to be. Um, I became associated with J Arts a number of years ago and was always very impressed by um, their mission of bringing, of connecting people through the arts and connecting people who, uh, otherwise might not have any connections through the arts. And uh, Laura contacted me about the possibility of doing an installation in Chelsea for Hanukkah. And I said, oh, great idea, great idea. And she said, well, can you take this, the, this artist around Chelsea and show him Jewish Chelsea? And I said, well, I'll do my best, you know. And it was, of course, during this, it was a few months ago. And um, I met Clint a uh, wonderful guy who had never really been to Chelsea before and knew nothing of its history. And we roamed through the city. Um, we, we had a great time. And um, a few weeks went by and I didn't hear anything. And then I inquired and heard that, well, maybe Chelsea's not quite the place. And at that point, I really got into action and um, contacted uh, Mimi and Jamie and Laura. And I said, you have to make Chelsea the place. This is the place. This is the place with such a rich Jewish past and such an incredible immigrant history and such a dynamic immigrant city. This is the place you have to do it. And here it is. So I'm actually quite thrilled. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit, I'll start to talk a little bit about kind of how I think um, Hanukkah, this particular Jewish holiday and this time of the year fill, fits in with Chelsea today. Um, so as most of you know, who, if you happen to be Jewish, that uh, Hanukkah is the story about a, an ancient Jewish group minority, powerless, who are about to um, be wiped out by an evil Syrian king and um, Judah Maccabee and his troop of warriors came in and beat back the Syrians and rededicated the temple that had been destroyed and there was light in the temple. There was one light and then, which was a miracle in and of itself. And then the oil lasted for eight nights. So the, this story though is really one of persecution of, of powerful forces trying to take away one's 
religion, one's culture, one's way of life, and the minority prevailing. And certainly, this is a story that um, Chelsea knows well, especially during this last eight months of uh, sickness, hunger, fear, exhaustion, and of a community really prevailing. And also, I think as a diaspora people, Jews know, they know very well how the sense of history and the sense of longing connects us to each other in our communities and around the world and also how it connects us to others who have suffered because of their beliefs, their otherness, um, their perceived racial differences. And the light, in, so we feel we, there is this bond there. And this light means that I think also that Chelsea's Jewish past has much to offer the community today. One is not only is Clint's work gorgeous and is a fine piece of art on Broadway, Chelsea, um, Clint's menorah has the ability to do what art does so well. Art tells the truth. And by this, I mean from the 1890s to the 1920s, and again after World War II, Chelsea took in thousands of immigrant Jewish, Im immigrant Jewish um, people escaping from Eastern European pogroms, murder and poverty. Chelsea offered a home to worship freely, to go to school, and opportunities to support a family. For Jews to live for the first time in many, many hundreds of years, to live as free contributing equals among their neighbors. And Chelsea continues to take in oppressed peoples from Latin and South America, from the Caribbean, from Somalia, from Southeast Asia, people searching for better lives for their families, decent housing, food, education for their children, jobs, and along with them, as the Jews did, they bring their rich cultures, their foods, their languages, and their dreams with them. So um, maybe now Clint can talk a little bit about his work. Sure. Thank you so much, Ellen, for that. Um, yeah, it was it was really uh, it was an an incredibly insightful tour that you led through Chelsea, and that's sort of where this whole thing began. Is when um, I was asked, uh, I was um, suggested to apply for this call. Um, my friend Alice Allison Judd suggested that I apply, um, who is a Mass Art alum, and knew that I am a light based uh, artist and. And when I found out about it, um, I became really excited about Chelsea in particular because of the, the history of the Jewish people. And I always love having a conceptual connection back to my work, um, whether that be either in the photograph or a place, a specific location. So to me, um, Chelsea was, was where I wanted to have the exhibition. Now, Ellen spoke about uh, the truth that there was, it was, uh, it was a struggle for me to make the piece work in the city of Chelsea because I envisioned making the photograph that ultimately led to being on the light bulbs of the menorah in the city of Chelsea. And it is a very dense city. And I was going around and I've, I've taken many um, drive throughs as well as the walking tour with Ellen. And I, I kept looking for like a landscape, something that would be um, not, not too difficult, I guess, of, of an image to uh, figure out what was being projected on the bulbs, but also something really sim simplistic. And, and it, it's just a great dense city. So, and that's when um, I turned to my resource of, um, you know, hundreds of images that I've shot in the years past. And I found this great image that I took in um, California of a eucalyptus forest. And um, when I shoot, I, it's very different than most people. And, and um, I, I, I use a large format film camera. So the negatives are about four by five inches or occasionally I'll shoot an image that's eight by 10 inches. And with that clarity, you could enlarge a print or a piece of film to basically at any scale. I mean, um, the work behind me is um, three triple stacked two foot bulbs. So that's a six foot tall image. And um, 
uh, bringing it back to how Laura first came across my work, this piece behind me was the piece that was at Hub Week in Boston a few years ago. Um, <laughs> so I, I had this image of the eucalyptus forest and I, and I knew it was, it was a great image that could be used one day for a light piece. And when I started combing through my negatives to try to find a piece for, for the Chelsea installation, I, um, I came across it and, and it really, it really worked on so many levels. To me, it, it rep represents, um, light and trees. I mean, the sun is setting on them. So it almost looks like they're ablaze, which is kind of neat in terms of the lighting of the menorah. And I, um, I just, I just found it working on so many different levels. So once I started Googling the history of Judaism and eucalyptus trees, I was pretty baffled by how much knowledge there was online. I mean, I, I kind of was only making that connection after I chose the image, but it, it just kind of worked. Um, the menorah, as most of you know, have, have nine bulbs and I have displayed all of my light bulb pieces before this one on reflective surfaces. Um, and the reflective surface is uh, to me a, um, a great way for the image to kind of complete itself when you're at a specific angle. So the, the most important thing about the menorah I wanted to um, focus on was that it is nine bulbs and I didn't want that to appear like there are 18 bulbs, for example, if you're at a, at a different angle with it being a mirror. So I chose a, um, a substrate that I've never worked before with. It's, um, it's called the Vanta Black Acrylic Paint. And Vanta Black Paint is a very deep, rich black paint that basically produces like a void. And with this background as a acrylic paint, um, it left zero reflection on the panel, which was exactly what I wanted to, to, to accentuate the, the number nine. Um, and it also worked too, like just on a conceptual level, you know, talking, um, uh, just listening to what Ellen spoke about the the past of um, Jewish people settling in Chelsea and how much you know was overcome by that. So I liked the metaphor too about the the void of whatever the past may have been. And then you have this beacon of light in the foreground, and and it's that um, kind of beacon that is what is the focal point. But it's kind of you know it works on other levels that you have this deep, rich um, void in the background. And then behind it um, was another first for me. I, the wall that I was um, chose to display my work on is 12 feet wide by eight feet tall. And typically that would be a, there it is. Um, typically that would be a, a large light piece. I mean, I would need three, four by eight panels to cover that with many bulbs. And that would be a very costly uh, installation. So I thought, well, what are some, you know, treatments that I could do to figure out how to make the wall feel full in, in, in its entirety with just a single panel with the, with the menorah. And um, that's when I came across this um, vinyl uh, wall covering treatment, which I've never done before. I've never had, um, I've never put wall vinyl um, up in terms of uh, an art material. So to have that in the background with this piece in the foreground, um, well, that was um, a unique first for me. And um, as I'm looking at this photograph on the screen, um, it should be mentioned that Gallery 456 was a former Salvation Army. Um, so there's there's a really, there's a lot of, um, you know, nods to that in, in, in the installation if you, if you go and choose to see it in person. And Clint, I would love it if you could tell us about the name, because I love how you came up with a name for this piece that relates to both the trees and the uh, menorah or Hanukia. Sure. Yeah. Bo, for me, um, it, it, you know, it simply is a branch, uh, a branch of a tree. So I, I loved that um, the menorah, to me, felt like a tree. I mean, it had these branch-like um, Oftentimes you see the menorah with the, um, with, with whatever material that the menorah is made out of, it, it branches out and you see it um, 
throughout. So it's the candle holder, you know, the piece that holds the whole thing together. So I think of that as a tree when I look at it. So, um, and the fact that the image was a eucalyptus forest, um, it just, that's kind of how I came to it. I love that. And I love how much significance we discovered with the trees once you um, decided to go with those images. And I know we had been talking a little bit about how it's a significant symbol in Israel. It's a symbol um, associated with a lot of um, the calmness and serenity and peace. And I think that's just a really other beautiful element to this. Thank you. It's great. And I, I, think, um, I think another part of the tree that really strikes me is that trees um, lay down very deep roots mm -hmm. and they put out beautiful branches. And Chelsea certainly has um, very, very deep immigrant roots. And its, um, its history is that of it being a gateway city. And I think the tree sometime, somehow represents that. And the roots, the branches that provide shelter for all of us and also let in some light. And the branches certainly, I know, among um, Jewish immigrants to Chelsea whose descendants have like branched out into the world and um, who have contributed much and have thrived really because of those roots in Chelsea. And uh, also uh, the tree means resilience and that's a big part of uh, the Hanukkah celebration. Trees, you know, take a long time to grow. They're not something that grow, that necessarily grow overnight and they have much endurance. And they have many, many special features that allow them to grow very, very old. And um, I kind of see, uh, I see a match there with, um, with the Jewish story in Chelsea and the newer immigrant stories in Chelsea. I also see the part about the light, letting in the light. They beautify this, wherever they are, they beautify, they make it a special place that's good for the earth. And um, I see, I think of uh, the famous uh, Jewish theologian, Abraham Joshua Heschel, who talked about his concept of radical amazement. And that, I'm really struck by that with, I'm really struck by that concept when I, when I'm as part of this installation. Heschel said that in the ordinary, in the everyday, there is the sacred. That when we open ourselves up to the awesomeness, really awesomeness of everything we, that we encounter in daily life, small things, there are miracles. And, um, in dark times, especially, like we've all experienced, and especially in Chelsea, the past eight months, the light gives us hope. Life, life, radical amazement is, is living in and making the light, even in unspeakable times of darkness, of disease and fear. And um, I think that Clint's menorah really beautifully depicts that, um, that light. So Chelsea, as I see it right now, um, are many people, it kind of embodies this sense of light and radical amazement. Um, the many residents of Chelsea who are frontline workers, who have lost their jobs, who every day work to survive and keep their families together during this really horrific time. Um, Chelsea's leaders and activists and volunteers and residents who have worked tirelessly really tirelessly for the last eight months to find the light during our nation's darkest time, pressuring local and state leaders, making phone calls, raising funds for food and diaper donations, coming up with rental assistance, pop-up food pantries that provide not only critical staples, but also they provide daily necessities like shampoo and baby formula. To those, and for those who can't wait in line for hours, volunteers delivering food, diapers, helping people with evictions, working with young people to keep them engaged in school. This is radical amazement. This is the spirit of a community. This is what the prophet Zechariah said when we think about Hanukkah and when I think about Chelsea too, that not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So the struggle goes on in Chelsea um, so, and please, I urge you, please give to whatever it takes at La Collaborativa to Chelsea Community Connections, who provide diapers, equipment, clothing, and whatever is needed to take care of babies and young families. Give whatever you can. 
for it is in these acts of standing up for justice, acts of loving kindness and compassion, that like the ancient Jews, the minorities that stood up for its belief and overcame powerful forces, and like our Jewish, Chelsea Jewish immigrants, whose ancestors grew deep roots in the city that enabled countless numbers of their descendants, like me, like us, to thrive, um, to live out our, our values of tikkun olam, to heal the world, and to keep creating our incredibly rich culture and legacy. So, and give whatever you can so that we live our spirituality. We live out our message of Hanukkah light, miracles, and resilience, so that we all get to live in a state of radical amazement. So, thank you. And Ellen, there could not have been a more beautiful and eloquent description of exactly what we were hoping to accomplish with this project. And really share the light of Hanukkah and what that really means very broadly with our entire greater Boston community. And so I think it's so special that we've been able to have this impact in Chelsea. Um, and something that I found so touching was um, when there, there was a group of local middle school students who heard about this piece and they were so inspired, you should all know, by the piece and the concept that they actually reflected on the themes of light and trees um, themselves. And Clint was able to feature some of their quotes and thoughts in the window, along with quotes of others. So I would love to share with everyone, both of you, Clint and Ellen, um, tell us about one or many of your favorite uh, either quotes or themes that came up in that. Well, I have, oh, <laughs> I'll go. Let, let me, I have to, I can't hold it back. Um, I have to say the very first quote that I saw, um, I saw some wonderful quotes from children about letting the light in and light makes them happy and light gives them hope. And they were great. But the very first quote that's on there is um, everything has a crack in it. And that's how the light gets in from Leonard Cohen. And um, that's my favorite to me that says it all. It says it all. So, Clint, do you want to add some? Absolutely. Uh, that is a great quote. And um, since I've gotten to know you, Ellen, we've uh, learned that we're huge Leonard Cohen fans. So that's really neat. Um, the very last quote. So the the first panel has quotes from the Jewish faith Chelsea leaders and. The second part is all of the, the children that Laura just spoke of. I have, um, my favorite was trees inspire me by knowing how much energy and life a tree holds. And that's from an 11 year old named Michaela. So, um, you know, if, if they're getting that from, you know, just the, the presentation, the concept that I presented to, um, to J arts, I mean, that's, that's great. So. I would definitely encourage everyone to go and see it for themselves. Um, personally, I find it best at night, but it's lit 24 seven. So you can see it anytime. And because it, the gallery is actually a large storefront window, you can um, drive slow, you can get out of your car and look at it, but you can also in this very cold weather at, in the evening, you can um, just, look at it from your car, but get up close so you can really see the details because it's very, very special. Yeah, really. it really is. It, we went the other night and my husband couldn't find a place to park. So he did the drive by and I got out and it was just, it's really a magnificent piece. I, I felt so proud. It's a gorgeous piece. We you know brought the light of Hanukkah to Chelsea. I just think it's so special. And someone out there asked um, if we've gotten any feedback from the residents. And I just want to share that um, I heard from a resident who's been very involved in rebuilding the Jewish community there, that he could not be more proud of this and that he thinks it's such an elegant and creative way to bring the light of Hanukkah into the community, which was so touching because I think that, you know, as Ellen, Ellen as you said, that, you know, this possibility to bring the light and talk about what it means historically in Chelsea and now. I think we've, we've really hit on that with some people. And then with the kids and the middle schoolers coming out, someone else asked, have the kids seen this yet? And I know um, some of them have, and we hope the rest of them will. And the piece has actually been extended. So uh, Clint, do you know what day it'll be coming down now? It's going to be at least till the second week of January. So, and um and, and speaking of kids being able to see it, I got to actually 
um, I had a helper in, install it with me, which is my son. So, and he's only six and um, we had such a great time going in the space and like clearing things out and, and my wife uh, helped as well. So it was, it was really like a, like a family kind of experience doing that together. And there weren't a whole lot of people that we could reach out to in these times. So I was like pulling on them, you know, like, are you guys going to help me? Like, this, you know, work to be done. So. You know, when I was there the other day, um, there were people walking by and stopping. I mean, it, it is such an un special, beautiful, and very unusual sight on Broadway in Chelsea. Um, so people have stopped like, what is this? What is this um, wonderful structure? What is this? And people stop and they look at it and then they read a little bit because, it, of course, it's... Um, all the signage is bilingual and in Spanish and English. And I, it's just, it's just beautiful. It is totally an act and a um, thing of beauty. It really is. Absolutely. Okay, so I have two different directions of questions and we can decide who goes first. I know Ellen, we, there's a couple of questions about um, how, what's going on with Chelsea right now with COVID. And generally, I would, we would love to hear from you a little bit more about um, some of what's happening in Chelsea, um, generally with the community and what's, you know, on the docket. And Clint, for you, we would love to see a little bit more of your studio. So who can I throw it to first here? Do you want, well, let me, I can answer a little bit about Chelsea. Things are still very precarious in Chelsea. I'm, I mean, I... I I'm totally overwhelmed and inspired by the community's um, work for the last eight months in taking care of its residents. But this, as we know, the pandemic is not going away that quickly, that um, despite this light of hope of the vaccine, many people will still be quite vulnerable for a long time. And um, jobs aren't coming back that quickly. Um, in fact, there was a study that was done with La Collaborativa to look at the impact of COVID on um, the Chelsea community. And uh, I think it was about 356 people that um, were surveyed and over half were unemployed, totally unemployed. That means no part-time, no nothing jobs. Another, um, and, and the many were not able to get unemployment. About over 30% said that they feel depressed and about over 80% of the people surveyed make regular trips to food pantries. So um, it is still really, really a struggle. Um, when, when you're in that city, um, whether you live there or you're visiting or you work there and you see lines of people hundreds of people waiting for food in this country. It's, um, it's, I'm grateful that we're all grateful that we give what we can to help people, but it's just, um, it's, it's just amazing. And it, it's not in a great way. So I, I would, again, urge people to do what they can. So that, and that's what's happening. But I, I and also I want to say again, this, concept of radical amazement that um, people are very um, resilient and they keep working at it. And uh, I know um, that uh, the every everybody I know in Chelsea is, um, whether they're part of social service agencies or religious institutions, especially Jewish religious institutions, the Wallace Street Synagogue and Temple Emanuel are all thinking ahead and thinking of, um, what can they do to contribute? What can we all do to contribute to the vibrancy and the life of this special community? So. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I will say from where I stand, it was really a pleasure to be able to not just come see this piece, but to actually order takeout from one of the local restaurants, both because the food is incredible, but yeah. also it's a nice way to support the community. And I would recommend that if anybody goes over to make a trip, order some takeout also. <laughs> Um, so Clint, you're in your studio and yeah. I think your work is just incredible. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you do what you do? And specifically what I would love to know is how do you go from photograph to light bulb? Ah, um, that's, that's definitely good. I'm in um, process right now of a piece that I'm installing uh, for Dana-Farber. So that's, um, that's really, 
That's really kind of cool. If you if you want to see more in my studio, we'll start with uh, the amazing Prince album. Uh, <laughs> um, so I could, if it's all right, I could just show you a little. That'd be um, great. So, well, this is um, some prints. Um, after I print them on backlight film, they get cut down and they start as these little strips. They are about five inches wide. And then I have, this is my, my Zoom setups here. It's kind of funny. Uh, these are the clear tubes that I, um, I cut down in the studio. Uh, then I blow them out with compressed air to get all the dust out and everything. And uh, then I carefully will, after uh, our Zoom tonight, put the prints in the tubes. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, then this is the, the panel that they're going to go on here. Awesome. So it's a... Uh, is that a, more of the Vanta Black? No. Um, that, well, I actually have another piece over here that uses the same material I could show you. Um, so it is a, uh, it's a beautiful piece of plexiglass. It's called a non-glare. So it doesn't give you a, a true reflection. It gives you like a blurred um, effect. Mm -hmm. So if you stand like right in front of it, I mean, you barely even see the, uh, um, barely even see the camera. So it, it, it produces like a beautiful, like out of focus effect from, from the image. So it's nice when, when uh, somebody doesn't want to necessarily see the reflection. It's going in their quiet room, which I just love. Um, they're designing the entire room around this artwork. So, um, and that's happening on Friday. Um, with or without a nor'easter coming tomorrow. So um, here's, here's another one. This is um, called Dune Shack. Oh, great. great. And, um, Gorgeous. Where's yeah. that photograph taken? That actually both of this, this one here and that one back there are in Provincetown. Um, so this is uh, one of the newest pieces I've done besides uh, bow. Um, this is a uh, a ship that wrecked on the break. Uh, I think it's called the Breakwater in uh, Provincetown. And and the ship actually, funny enough, it happened um, in a March nor'easter um, a couple years ago. So there's a little bit about my studio. <laughs> it's great. Thank you. <laughs> Well, then I guess since we talked about um, the, uh, this, this piece is titled Zephyr and it, it first was um, unveiled at the Hub Week. Gosh, I was blinking on the name, so. In a shipping crate, no less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that piece is a lot brighter. I actually have it dimmed um, so it wouldn't like overexpose in the, in the Zoom today. Come visit, I mean, well, visit, you know, if you want to do a, <laughs> it's hard to do visits right now, but I'm, I'm right in Boston on, on Wareham Street. It's a fantastic um, studio arts building and uh, there's a lot of other artists in here too. So it's a great place to be. All right, we'll take you up on a tour one day when we're allowed in. <laughs> that sounds great. Awesome. Um, and, uh, Ellen, I don't know, you You had mentioned to me the other day that um, in terms of what's happening in Chelsea right now, there's a new city councilor who is connected by family. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, there's a new city councilor in, che in Chelsea. Um, she was elected at the last municipal election I, um, almost a year ago, about a year ago. Her name is Naomi Zabit. She's Jewish and um, she worked very hard. She works very hard. She and her sister Deborah Zabit, who is um, in film, make uh, they're incredible activists in the city and they make beautiful things happen. One being uh, they're responsible for having planters all spring and summer throughout the downtown to really beautify the downtown. And now 
They have, uh, in addition to the usual Christmas decorations that go up, they have beautiful menorahs strung up on the uh, on Broadway. So when you drive to downtown Chelsea, although it, um, the languages are Spanish, it's not Yiddish anymore, and, but um, you still see that um, the influence is very much there. So, um, and I, we have to thank Naomi for making that happen. And the yes. Chelsea City Council and, the city manager, Tom Ambrosino. Well, and I have to say, it's been so touching to have everybody in Chelsea rally around this project. It's really a great feeling. And I know, Ellen, you would describe Chelsea as really being about family and you feel it. Right. You really do. I mean, it's an incredible city. I think it's it has a history that is like that. Not that there aren't factions and pe some people don't get along and whatever. It's a, just like any place. But um, there, it's only 1.8 square miles. It's very small, and as Clint alluded to, it's very densely populated, and people are kind of on top of each other. I know we, everybody knows everybody, um, but it's um, it's a special place, and there are a lot of uh, people there now. I think young people who really are working hard to make it a city that's not just a gateway, but a city where um, people stay for many, many generations, and. Uh, um, I think it's incredibly exciting and vibrant and a wonderful place, really. It's great. I would second that. Um, as Ellen said, I hadn't been before the tour that she gave. And, and you know, there's a lot of, lot of one ways I wasn't expecting. And like, it's a little convoluted to get to like a destination at times. And, and, um, and, but when we were on foot, I mean, it's really a navigable city and there was, there was so much to the, the tour and, you know, we saw like the first school that, that the Jewish people like studied in and it was just in a home and there were people in that house. I had no idea. I, I believe that it was a former um, school. I mean, maybe they did, I guess, but um, it was really fun walking around. It was just um, three of us, right? A four. Right. Right. And, yeah. and many people thought we were like scouting for a movie. Like it was <laughs> really cool because we kept like pointing and like talking about things and like looking and taking photos and taking notes. So they, a lot of people thought we were location scouting for a movie. So um, many film uh, producers out there, um, Chelsea would be a great city to, to do a film about. It's, been, it's had a lot of films. A lot of people have come to Chelsea. I, I think a lot of people think of Chelsea as a, uh, you know, a gritty urban place, which it is. And, uh, and it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And uh, I think um, this past year, especially is for a city that has been working so hard to, um, to build itself up and to provide a safe, secure, and and lovely place for people to live and bring up families. This past year has been really, really difficult. It's been a real punch in the gut, so to speak, for Chelsea. But it's just amazing to me how people have rallied and people are working so hard to um, get us to get us through, that. and not just get the people of Chelsea through it, but get all of us through it because we're all so so connected. And whether it's through history, whether it's through family, whether it's just through our sheer humanity, we're connected. And uh, it's, it's an, a special place. I would agree. I'm so grateful to both of you for making me so much more aware of Chelsea, where I have family roots. So I love that we have this sort of rallying around. Um, okay, before I let us go, I have a specific question from someone in the audience that I love. And the question is, I think that the building where the piece is installed was a kosher food market many years ago. Do you know, Ellen? Well, I know across the street from there was Promisals, which was a kosher food market. There may have been a kosher food market mm. there in that space. I don't know, but I recall as a child going to Promisals, and I believe it was across the street, going with my grandmother and my mother to buy kosher food and especially food for Passover, you know. Um, but it might've been most of Broadway was owned by uh, family, small family owned businesses, mostly Jewish. And uh, which really provided the, um, was kind of provided the 
the foundation for generations and generations of um, people everywhere now. I mean, it's not unusual. Chelsea is one of those places. And I think this is true for, um, um, I know it's true for mostly Latinx who live there now, but it's one of those places that wherever you go, you run into somebody from Chelsea <laughs> and uh, somebody who was from Chelsea or is from Chelsea, or at one time their grandparents were from Chelsea. So I mean, it's just one of those places and um, it's pretty magical. And I will make a pitch that for when we can be back in person, I will enlist you, Ellen, to do another walking tour. She's done, I think, four wonderful sold out walking tours for us um, of Chelsea. She does these regularly. We asked to put a food spin on it um, because we just love the idea of thinking about things through food. So we'll have to book another one for when we are allowed to do so. I'll do it. We'll, we'll be back there again. I know we will. Yeah, we will. definitely. So. And Clint, were you going to say something? I was gonna say it's the home of the pizza bagel. That's right. Thank you. Bagel bakery. Cat's uh, bakery. Kate's. It's Chelsea. It's Kate's. Kate's, Kate's. bakery. Richard Kate's, who is uh, his father, started the bakery in 1938. Is um, still there, still pushing out those bagels, and uh, they're great. They're delicious. We got to go inside and, and <laughs> taste samples and. Right. And it was really uh, interesting because I actually grew up going to an old fashioned bakery uh, in Pennsylvania. So that my, my parents' family, uh, my mom's family owned, uh, still owns and operate, operate. So oh. it was neat. Right. So it's uh, actually one, of, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, Deborah, Deborah and Naomi Zabit, their father, Richard Zabit, Zabit, who lives in Chelsea and is active at the Walnut Street Synagogue. Had, grew up in Chelsea, moved to, moved to Maine for a while, where he owned probably the only kosher bagel bakery in Maine, and then uh, in recent years has moved back to um, Chelsea and still every week turns out beautiful challahs for his family and um, all kinds of good things. But uh, uh, there is, again, those roots run really deep, and Clint, you captured that so beautifully. So Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> you really did, Clint. And I will make another shameless plug that Ellen is talking about Richard and the Walnut Street Synagogue. And we are working on another project with them for the spring because if you have not seen their space, they have this incredibly gorgeous ceiling and hand carved wooden arc that everyone needs to see. Um, and so we're hoping to work with them to highlight that because I just think when you're thinking about the Jewish roots and the artistic roots of Chelsea, there's so much there. So uh, we're hoping to, to do more and more to feature that for all of you. And my other plug would be simply Follow Clint on Instagram because as you can hear from him, his work is going everywhere and it is just incredible um, between your photography and your light, Clint. I just, I love it. So I hope you'll all follow him on Instagram. And I just want to say thank you so much to both of you for, for making this project happen, for being here today and telling us about it. Um, I feel so lucky to work with you and the rest of the Brighter Connected artists and team who made this week so full of light despite the really difficult moment we're living in. So thank you so much for bringing this light. Um, and like we said, we hope you will get out to Clint's piece and the other seven. Um, some are on view through tomorrow, the last night of Hanukkah. Others like Clint's will be extended. All of the information will be on the J Arts website if you would like to know before you get out there. Um, and of course, this entire project was made possible by generous donors to J Arts. And we hope that if you feel inspired by what you're seeing and hearing that you will make a gift as well to make this possible. So thank you both so, so much. Yeah. We'll have to do this again. Yeah.